feels so weird to be back making videos with the face cam. Usually I have gameplay, but not today. I got face cam for your boy. But yeah, man, what time is it? It's 10.10. 10. 10, 10. I don't know if you guys can see that. 10. Uh, I don't think it's 10.10, 10, though. I got my... Uh, no, shit. My hair is this. I got my shades on. Nah, I'm kidding. <clears throat> How's it going, guys? Welcome to a brand new YouTube video. I hope you guys are all doing great. So, guys, we are going to be talking about some Resident Evil Village DLC ideas I have. If you guys have your own Resident Evil Village DLC ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm going to be referencing Resident Evil 7 in this video because I think that and i don't think a lot of people share the same opinion but i think resident evil 7 had a very very great dlc uh release like tons of content tons of content their model for the release of those dlcs are just phenomenal i loved resident evil 7's dlc so good it's playing those story packs i played a couple um back in the day when it first just came out i'm replaying resident evil 7 actually i'm going to be downloading it relatively soon and playing it again um, but playing, I played the DLC packs and I've seen YouTube videos, and uh, not a lot of people can agree with me on that. Not a lot of people can agree with me on that. The Not a Hero DLC with Chris Redfield. Good. But today, guys, we are going to be talking about Resident Evil Village DLC because they have not released anything in about a year. You know, we still have Resident Evil Outrage, which is not confirmed at all or maybe might be cancelled which most likely I'm leaning to the cancel side we got Resident Evil Reverse we got Resident Evil 9 we got Resident Evil Apocalypse which I'm pretty sure is 9 but people are thinking it's something different um, and then we also have Resident Evil Reverse and then the Resident Evil 8 DLC so they are hard at work now Capcom is hard at work today I'm going to be giving some ideas and I've made this video a while ago but I wanted to make an updated version. All right, guys, so for the first idea that I have for a DLC is from the perspective of a villager in Resident Evil Village. Now, as soon as Ethan shows up to the village, the village is pretty much decimated and it's destroyed. Most of it, right? It's pretty empty beside the monsters being there. And, well, what if we had the perspective of the one of the villagers now one could come to mind uh sophia i think that's her name the girl that dies and her dad dies too <clears throat> what about those two what if it's from their perspective and then when ethan comes around that's when the end is now that's just one idea right there if it's on no that's a point but i would like to see a perspective maybe in the castle we do get notes around the castle mind you and inside the actual village itself um we get notes detailing how everything was going uh mind you these events happened in the 50s the 60s the 70s and i think in the 1800s too mind you um i could be wrong about the 1800s but i'm pretty sure that event happens in one of the notes um but yeah one of the notes happens in the 1800s in resident evil 7 we had clancy uh his his you know unfortunate his unfortunate fate he went into the uh the vacant house and he didn't come back out. right but we got his perspective of playing games with e uh with uh, lucas he gets some of his fingers chopped off if you guys uh, haven't played that mini game like we had a variety of content in that game which is just so amazing on Capcom's end, right? And I'm hoping that's how they treat Resident Evil Village, right? And I also want to see it from the perspective of Chris, too. I mean, we barely got any Chris in Resident Evil Village, right? We get, like, one mission. It's towards the end. We have to go in and destroy the meta the meta Mega Might Seat or something. I can't remember the name. It's like Mega Might Seat. We have to go in and destroy it. We find uh, Ethan's wife. The second idea that I have, guys, is pick up where the Resident Evil cliffhanger left. Now, I'm not talking about when Ethan's daughter's a full-on adult. I'm talking about with the BSA. I mentioned it in another video, but we should pick up where the BSA left off. All we know is that Chris is going to the European headquarters of the BSA. Mind you, him and Jill... Uh, helped co-found the BSA 
and also he left because they were doing too much and pretty much Resident Evil Village pretty much sets that plot but doesn't really do too much with it. The BSA sends weapons of their own. The soldiers are considered bioweapons. And Chris is even a bioweapon himself. Yeah, so we got a bioweapon version of Chris that ends up going. I'm pretty sure this is it. I've seen a lot of people go back and forth saying that this is not, but I do think it is necessarily. But yeah, I, I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. And that's my second idea. Pick up where the events left off and make it a sequel to Resident Evil 9. I'll leave it as a cliffhanger to Resident Evil 9. You know, um, I would love to see where Ethan da Ethan's daughter ends up, you know, how she grew up. I would love to see that, you know, because I don't want to see a time skip where we just see her as an adult. You know, don't get me wrong. I love that. But at the end of the day, I would love to see love to see her progress as an adult without her dad, without pretty much her mom, because we don't even see her mom. I gave you guys pretty much a good amount of ideas that I have. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm going to be making a video uh, of a comment that I saw the other day. And uh, yeah. So other than that, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.